Hey everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to the channel where it's going to be a little bit different this week because I'm going to be sampling all, with an asterisk, my unread books. So some of you will have seen on Twitter recently, I put up a poll because so I decided I was going to read the first chapter of all of the unread books on my bookcase and I wanted to know if I would be best talking about those chapters and my thoughts on them in separate videos, five of them spread throughout a week or in one marathon session. And 60% of those who voted said that they wanted uh, a few videos. So I do about five books in each. I've got 28 books in total. And I've decided that I'm gonna do that over the course of a week. So for the rest of this week, I'm gonna do one video a day, going through five or six of the books that I've read the first chapter of. So I'm just gonna get straight into it. I've got my first batch of five here. The rest of them are all on the floor next to me. I might not read them all now, but I will talk about them throughout the week. I'm going to start off with Demon's Reign though by Ben Galley and David Estes. I'm not going to read all of the synopses for these because I don't want to spoil myself as much as anyone else, but this one is on my TBR for August, so I'm going to read it first to give me more chance to forget about it for when I come to read it proper in a week or two. That was an interesting start. There's, um, I like how a book can add in, just in the first chapter or prologue, some odd little bits of world building without you feeling like you're out of place. So we've got things like Lace Wings, which I know about from uh, the cover of the, is it the second or the third book in particular? Uh, kind of like a hummingbird type creature, but big enough for a rider. Um, literally just mentioned very briefly, uh, talk about the iridescent wings, and then it's gone. And I like a book that can do that without, as I say, making you feel out of place, without making you 
uh, kind of without overwhelming you basically. Uh, so with this one we start off with a character who has been, at least in his words, wrongly accused of murder and he's going to be executed basically and then something happens and the execution doesn't go ahead, it's stopped. It's not a public one, it's, it's out in the public but it's not kind of, um, you know, with a big crowd watching or anything like that. There's only a couple of people who are actually performing the execution. Um, but he's uh, he's freed basically by the executioners because it seems like the uh, almost like the sun is falling. There's a big dark uh, gash that's been rent into the sun, and the sky is going dark. And there's this big obsidian kind of tower, this uh, great landmark of the area, has suddenly fallen, crashed, and uh, just been destroyed basically. And uh, they're all running back to their. Uh, it sounds like a village, but you've got this uh, this tree as well, which I know from a map of the world. Uh, they've got these kind of world trees almost where they live in. Um, so I need to see a bit more about that and to uh, to get the, the proper kind of uh, picture of it, I guess, from the following chapters. Um, but they're all running back there and there's people who are pointing him out saying he's a murderer, he must have escaped, he was supposed to be executed, he's got blood on his hands uh, from uh, when he was being freed, basically the knife that was cut in his bind, uh, his, the ropes that bound him, things like that. Um, so people are attacking him and he's trying to get them off and saying look at the sky, what's going on, uh, something cataclysmic is happening and then there's this big creature that comes from the earth, basically you just see this giant hand uh, with claws uh, coming out of the earth basically and that's pretty much where the first chapter finishes so it was very intriguing i liked it um, i'm very interested to see where it goes i knew a little bit about this one and uh, the cover is uh, is also very intriguing uh, there's a lot going on there a lot to uh, uh, to look out for so uh, yeah really interested to read this one in august which for me right now at the point of filming is a week away. I'm going to move straight into the second book in my little pile, which is one which has been on my bookshelf for quite a while now. This one is The Gutter Prayer by Gareth Hanrahan. And uh, again, I'm going to go into it blind as I am with all of these because I don't want to spoil myself. This one's got a prologue, so uh, with some of them, if it's got a very short prologue or depending on how it goes, I might read on to chapter one. Otherwise, I'm a prologue reader because it's part of the book, it's there to be read. I'm going to read the prologue. That was unexpected. I, I mean, I didn't really have any uh, perceptions coming into these books uh, for pretty much any of them. Any of these 28 I'm going to be reading over the course of uh, the next day or two and putting videos out over the next week for. But uh, this one is uh, the prologue, as I say, is very unusual and was unexpected because uh, it starts out in the second person. And that's not something that I generally like to read. I was just checking at the end of it, uh, flicking through chapter one to see that it is. So uh, it does appear to be in the third person and it's just the prologue in the second. But as you go along, uh, we're um, kind of seeing different people who are, uh, they look like they're thieves, they're looking for something, they're going through a building. And the more you get into this opening, well, this prologue, um, the more you realize that you're not a character in the typical sense. It appears that you are actually um, kind of looking at what's happening, looking at these thieves from the perspective of the building that they are entering and they are looking through. It talks about your halls, your vault, uh, papers that are going up uh, that are within this vault that they're going through. And then they are I don't know, it seems like they're maybe tricked. Uh, a god had left a room unlocked or a door unlocked and that's how they'd been able to get in. And then he uh, he appears and he's got these other gods with him and there's uh, 
uh, not a battle, but they're trying to flee, obviously, and uh, whatever happens, whether it's intentional or it's uh, a distraction for them to get out, or whether it's an accident, um, I might have skipped over that, actually. Um, but the building is burnt down, and basically you can see, again, from the perspective of the building, the flame spreading and supports uh, crumbling and a tower falls and things like that and then you basically fall in on yourself so it was a very odd opening chapter and it doesn't really give too much but it does give a bit of world building there's this disease so you've got the stone men uh, so it's a bit like uh, I can't remember what what it was called in uh, a song of ice and fire where you've got the um, kind of the touch if uh, one of these stone men touches you you gradually start to turn to stone yourself so it's kind of a skin uh, disease of some sort um, so uh, yeah there's a few opening bits in here which uh, give clues as to what I might expect from the rest of the book but because it's not from the traditional kind of character perspective everything is up in the air and I don't really know what to expect moving on because of that it was still pretty decent it was still pretty interesting and uh, has my intriguement intriguement and has me intrigued for what I'm going to find in the rest of the book. I've got a couple of friends who've read this and really enjoyed it, so when I do get to uh, continuing with this one, hopefully I'll also enjoy it. Bit of sci-fi next. I'm going to read The Treasure of Law Rev by Brian Asher. This one is part of the Inked intercontinents I think it is um, and it's a uh, kind of a shared world there's a fantasy that's also set within this kind of shared world uh, so that's a very interesting concept in itself um, I have read part of the fantasy which is why I'm going for the sci-fi at the moment short prologue was it a prologue I think it was a prologue get back to the start of it the pages are stuck together yeah so a short prologue here and uh, we've got a, a character who is waking up from hibernation is in uh, kind of a hibernation uh, bed basically and uh, I think he might have uh, actually broken himself out of that he's uh, going through code in his head and he's able to pass the code and he's trying to find a vulnerability basically to trick it so he can crack into it so uh, then he gets up and he's basically it tells you that he's merged his mind with this uh, this computer essentially this great uh, sort of the most powerful computer uh, ever conceived kind of thing um, and he's he's wanting to create the world in not in his image but create the world as he wants it to be um, but his partner who uh, kind of created this computer with him has stabbed him in the back basically he's put in uh, various blocks to prevent that so our POV character is going to try to find something uh, a I presume the titular treasure of Law Rev uh, to uh, to enable him to get past that basically and, and do what he wants to do. So there's a few things in here. Obviously, it's a sci-fi, so it's a little bit different anyway. You've got this character who um, just does an offhand comment. He mentions about his organs, his non-metal organs. So part of his body is artificial part of it is not um, it doesn't really give us too much it just literally tells us that he's going to be going on this essentially this quest it says it might take him 10 years to uh, to do everything that he needs to do all of his research and everything to be able to find and acquire this named item um, this uh, something sphere uh, diffuser sphere and uh, and break these bounds these bonds that are upon him basically so he can do what he wants so it's quite interesting it uh, it sets the scene quite nicely for what i presume we're going to find moving on from chapter one onwards next in my pile i've got an spfbo 10 entrant um, 
is it SPFBO 10? I think it was SPFBO 9 actually, this one. Do apologise. Troop of Shadows by Jennings Zabrinsky. This has got a pretty cool cover. Um, I'm not sure what to, uh, what to expect from the inside. I've heard that there are guns involved. We'll see how much because we know that's not one of my favourites when it comes to fantasy. But if it's done well and uh, kind of minimally, I can still really enjoy the book and uh, hopefully that's what I'm going to get with this one. very different opening for me, a very different type of book. This is kind of a, a Western feel to it. I don't know if that is the, the theme, the setting throughout the book, but certainly that's what we get here. We've got a band of mercenaries and they're uh, one of many bands of mercenaries by the sounds of it who are trying to track down some bandits. The last few jobs haven't ended well by the sounds of it. There are a few uh, payday short basically so they've mutinied and they're taking away their leader who's tied up to hand him over to their benefactors or do something else with him. He's obviously not into that, he wants to uh, to be let go and says basically they're going to inherit his debt essentially so uh, what's the point, it doesn't work out for them. Uh, they then come across a uh, an obstruction in the path uh, which looks a little bit too fake so uh, they presume this is going to be an ambush maybe they found the bandits after all and then you've got shadow men which may be these guys on the cover uh, coming along and basically massacring them and uh, the uh, the leader the new leader who is a birdman which is interesting uh, is decapitated and uh, copper who is our uh, our point of view character is basically thankful that they mutinied because it could have been him killed instead. He's uh, crawling away basically trying to, uh, to keep himself uh, unnoticed by the shadow men who are attacking them. So it's quite interesting, there's a few world building beats on here as well. I like the description of the shadow men, it's, uh, it starts out he notices this sword uh, and can just about make out the figure of the man holding it because he's basically is uh, blending into the rock face behind him so it's described as um, like where you get those artists who paint bodies so that they blend into the uh, the scenery behind them. It's basically that, but it can change. So it's kind of a chameleon effect when he, uh, when the Shadow Man uh, breaks away from the wall and is attacking them, um, his body goes to different colours and then it reverts back to the rock kind of colour. So uh, there's some kind of magic or power or uh, innate ability involved there. So uh, it's quite interesting. I'm definitely intrigued in this one and would look forward to carrying on and finding out a bit more. The last book in my batch of five to start off with, is that a five? Yeah, first batch of five is A King's Radiance by Luke Schultz. Uh, this one, I did break them up by opening uh, paragraph uh, to make sure that I wasn't reading all the long ones together or all the short ones together. And this one is, uh, yes, yeah, 16, 15 pages, so it's one of the longest opening chapters. It's another prologue to start me off with this one. Let's see what it's all about. Hello, Milo, you coming back up? Hello.
I don't know what to make of this one. It was uh, it was a bit interesting, but uh, I don't know. It's maybe a little bit. I want to say slow, but it really wasn't slow. It's a bit of an odd one. Uh, I think it's because there are a couple of different scenes in it, basically, and uh, and it uh, uh, it takes a bit of movement between them, basically. So we start off with a bit of. Um, I guess magic, I'm unsure really what's going on, but the following pages do start to explain it a little bit. You've got uh, a young royal who is revealed later on as being about 10 years old, uh, and he has some outbreak. It's um, uh, powers manifesting for the first time, and it's called Shine, it's called White Light, is it? Um, and it's, uh, it's some kind of light power, basically, and uh, he's, uh, his arm has been completely burned by it. Uh, he runs away, his sister follows and finds him and gives him a pricket, which is a little lizard type thing and uh, apparently it helps with this light. Uh, so when he's manifesting it, the lizard will uh, take some of the power in possibly uh, and stop it from being such a problem for the prince basically. Then there's news that an eagle is coming. We're not told what the eagles are at the time, but uh, there's speculation as to what they're going to look like. And this 10-year-old main character is saying that he wants to be an eagle when he's older. Uh, is he going to be a giant? Is he going to have pointy ears? Is he going to shine? Things like that. So they've obviously never seen one, but it's kind of this mythical creature almost. Then it turns out to be just a man uh, surrounded by guards. The youngsters of the family are not to be there. So that's the 10 year old and the sister who is two years older. Um, they spy anyway and decide they want to see them, which is how we know the eagle is just a man. Um, through events that happen, the sister who has violet eyes is declared as a mystic, I believe. Um, I think it was her who was declared as a mystic anyway uh, because of the colour of her eyes and the eagle says he wants her for his collection and basically his guards go and grab her. Uh, the 10 year old main character obviously is trying to prevent that, he doesn't want that to happen so he has his eye slashed by one of the guards and uh, basically he's losing blood and he blacks out at the end of it. So there's quite a lot happening over a few scenes which is uh, always difficult to do I think a little bit uh, where you've got such a variation between those scenes within just a 15 minute opening but uh, definitely there is uh, some interest in there it's intriguing to me this is one that's in my uh, 2024 reading plan so I am going to be reading this at some point over the next couple of months and seeing where we go on from here. So those are my first five out of the 28 books that I'm going to be reading the first chapter of uh, over the course of the next, uh, well, as far as what you'll be able to see over the course of the next week. So tune in tomorrow where you'll be able to see another batch of my unread books. That's everything for today though. I hope you enjoyed this quick look through these titles. Let me know down below if you've read any of these and what I should expect from the rest of the book as I read on. I'll hopefully see you in the next video sometime soon. Until then, as always, take care of yourselves, read some good books. Bye for now.